Hey, hey, people of planet Earth. Today's video is going to be a one-stop shop optimization guide for Fallout New Vegas. I'm going to detail every single modification and tweak that I've come across that purports to improve stability or performance in this game, and I'll tell you which ones work and which ones don't just work. Sometimes it doesn't just work. So you don't want to miss this video unless you have no interest in playing this game and don't give a shit about it, then you probably should miss this video. You should probably turn it off right now because all of the advice I'm going to give is only applicable for this game and no other. I wanted to back up my findings by showing you some benchmarks and frame rate analysis and shit, but I can't find any recording software that doesn't limit my frame rate to 60 or otherwise reduce it greatly and I don't have a capture card or anything like that. I guess I'm not going to be the next Digital Foundry. Still, even if I can't show you the benchmark, I can write down the results and present them in a nice chart. So, I'm at least as good as Linus Tech Tips. Anyways, that's enough fucking around, I want to make this video short. The first thing you need to realize is that this game is brutally CPU limited. So the newly released RTX 4090 isn't going to do much better than a GTX 1060 at 4K in this game, assuming they're both being delivered frames by the same CPU. And this game only uses two CPU cores at most, and only one of those cores will be maxed out at any time. The second core will be used occasionally, but it will never be fully utilized. So if you have a modern 16 core CPU, it's not going to help you too much in this game. 14 of those cores will be completely untouched. Single core performance is absolutely king in this game, and the worst performing areas are CPU intensive ones with a lot of NPCs, objects, items on the ground, scripts running in the background, shit that's using up your CPU. In addition, the vanilla game has a 60 FPS cap, which you can get around by using INI tweaks and fucking with the NVIDIA control panel, but I would not recommend running the game above 60 FPS in vanilla because game speed is tied to frame rate. The game also has a periodic micro stutter, which happens in addition to all of the regular stuttering, which you can somewhat alleviate by putting the game on an SSD, but that wouldn't have helped you in 2010, back when nobody had an SSD. Back then you were kind of just fucked and you had to deal with it. And I still have to deal with it because I don't have an SSD with enough space to put this game on, so all of my benchmark tests are on a hard drive, which is why the 1% and 0.1% lows are so low. They'll probably be better for you if you install this game on an SSD. So that's my first bit of advice here. Put the game on an SSD. It's only 7 or 8 gigabytes, which is nothing compared to modern games, so hopefully you can find the space. My second bit of advice is to run the game in exclusive full screen mode. Exclusive full screen will give you the highest FPS possible, and the only downside is it takes one or two seconds longer to tab out of the game which isn't that much of a downside, because how often are you tabbing out anyways? To enable exclusive full screen, all you have to do is right click on the Fallout New Vegas EXE, go to the compatibility tab, and check disable full screen optimizations. Oh, and if you're still on Windows 7 or XP or Vista, there's no such thing as optimized full screen. You are in exclusive full screen by default, so there's no need to change anything with the EXE. When it comes to launcher options, most of them are not going to affect your frame rate in any way. Aside from the fade settings, I'd recommend keeping actor fade at 15 because it affects gameplay so much you do not want NPCs popping up right in front of your face, after all. Object and item fade should also be maxed out if you can, but at least try to keep them above 10 so you don't see shit popping up right in front of your face. Shadow settings and specularity seem to have no impact on frame rate uh, for my testing because only NPCs in this game actually cast shadows, so there's not that many shadows in the game and specular lighting only seems to affect the GPU and only very slightly. LOD settings seem to have no impact on frame rate in my testing, so I would keep them maxed out unless you're on a very low end system and you're trying to get as many frames as possible. And that's all you can really do with the vanilla game. Now we need to move on to installing mods. So the first thing you're going to need is an account on Nexus Mods and you'll also need to install Mod Organizer 2 so you don't accidentally fuck up your game when installing these mods. Although some mods will still have to be installed manually, including this first one, which is XNVSE, which is the latest version of the New Vegas script extender. Most of the performance increasing mods we're going to use today have this as a prerequisite, so you need to install it. 
Next, you should install the New Vegas Tick Fix, which reduces load times and micro stutter. But most importantly, it removes the base game's frame rate cap, so you can run the game at whatever arbitrary frame rate you desire without encountering physics bugs. The default INI settings for New Vegas Tick Fix are fine, but there are two settings you might want to enable or disable depending on your circumstances. They're called B, Modify DirectX Behavior, and B, Use Default Pool for Textures. If you turn on both, RAM usage will be greatly reduced, but it will no longer be possible to tab back into the game after tabbing out, unless you use windowed mode, which I wouldn't recommend, or DXVK, which I would sort of recommend. We'll talk about it later. We will also install JIPLN NVSE, which fixes some game engine bugs, but most importantly for us, enables us to use a Fallout custom.ini file. So instead of editing the game's default INIs, we can simply add what tweaks we want to the falloutcustom.ini file. And I will paste my falloutcustom.ini into the description of this video, so you can just copy that and use my settings. They're the best that I found, and I made sure not to include anything that might crash your game or cause you problems. Okay, with the frame rate uncapped, I think it's finally time to start getting into the game and actually doing some benchmarks. I did four benchmarks, but unfortunately, Except for the last one, they are all very variable, and they don't really do a good job of showcasing the cumulative improvement of all the performance mods we're going to be using. But I'll show them anyways. The first benchmark is a 30 second run from Doc Mitchell's house all the way to the sign at the end of town. In the second benchmark, I'm using the free camera to float between two fire barrels on opposing sides of the thorn which is a very CPU intensive area full of NPCs and lights and all sorts of shit so it doesn't run too well. The third benchmark is a combat benchmark inside NCRCF where I blow up all these guys in their fucking limbs with a riot shotgun. Unfortunately this one is super super variable since I'm not shooting them the exact same way every time and obviously they're not reacting the exact same way as well so this one's kind of useless. The fourth and final benchmark which is the best one is me just standing still at the entrance to the Repcon facility, which again is one of the most CPU intensive areas in the entire game for really no reason. It's just a building. Obsidian must have screwed up the occlusion planes here because it runs terribly. We're getting 50 FPS just standing here doing nothing and there's no enemy NPCs around. I already killed them all. Overall, these results are not too bad, but I'm still getting below 60 FPS in some areas. So let's go back and install some more mods. Next up is New Vegas Anti-Crash, which is an essential plugin for preventing poorly made mods from crashing your game. It makes crashes a lot less frequent. It doesn't really improve your performance though. For that, we will install another plugin called Stewie Tweaks, a plugin that lets you customize many, many aspects of the game that were previously hard-coded. It contains a fix that makes combat encounters less laggy, which is enabled by default so you don't have to worry about finding it. You should also enable B inline vanilla functions to improve performance, and also B skip intro video to make the game load into the main menu significantly faster. Beyond that, I would recommend taking a look at all of the possible tweaks and uh, seeing if any of them are to your liking. You can really customize the game a hell of a lot with this one simple mod. To get New Vegas Anti-Crash working, we're going to need to install the Fallout New Vegas 4 gigabyte patch, which lets the game use the full 4 gigabytes of RAM that 32-bit applications are allowed to use. If you're using the GOG version of Fallout New Vegas, there's no need to bother with this step because the GOG EXE already comes with this fix pre-installed, but the Steam version does not. So patch your EXE if you're on Steam. After installing this batch of mods, I did another run of all my previous benchmarks, and I didn't really find that much of an improvement. In the combat test, my 1% and 0.1% lows were quite a bit higher, but that could be down to random chance rather than anything else. And in the fourth benchmark, I was still stuck at 50 FPS. So I think we need some more performance mods. Next, we'll install the New Vegas Mesh Improvement mod, which reduces the poly count of various meshes in the game, and also it reduces the number of draw calls needed on your CPU, and it does all this while actually improving the quality of some of the meshes. We'll also be adding the Extended Room Bounds mod, which I assume adds more occlusion planes in uh, some interior areas of the game to help improve performance. This mod comes with an installer, 
So we'll be installing the full version, but we will not be adding any compatibility patches or ticking any experimental options. After running the benchmarks again, results in the first three benchmarks are inconclusive. There doesn't seem to be any performance impact for better or for worse. But in the fourth benchmark scenario, I'm getting a whopping 66 FPS, whereas before I was getting 50. That's a pretty big improvement, and I'd imagine that's down to the extended room bounds mod really improving performance in that particular interior, as well as other vanilla game interiors that have uh, performance problems. Coming up next is the New Vegas Heap Replacer, which replaces the game's heap. Whatever the hell a heap is, I don't even know. Anyways, you install this one manually by just putting the DLL file in the same folder as your game EXE. You'll know the mod is working because the next time you launch your game, you'll see a black console window pop up. If you don't like seeing that console window for whatever reason, you can create an empty text file, uh, rename the file extension to TMP, and uh, give it the same name as the DLL, and that will get rid of the console window for you. We'll also add in the latest Og Vorbis libraries, which I guess replace the 12 years outdated ones that came with the game. Apparently they have better performance. Well, we'll see about that. Let's do another set of benchmark runs. Yeah, as you can see in all of these benchmarks, I see either a very slight performance increase within the margin of error, or no increase at all. But this is with very, very few mods installed. If you have a huge load order, the heap replacer might make a big difference. I'm not sure. But what will definitely make a difference is a DLL file that I already mentioned called DXVK, which translates the original DirectX libraries and shit into the Vulkan equivalent ones, which seem to have better performance, especially in CPU limited scenarios. Make sure to use the asynchronous version of DXVK, and you need to use the 32-bit DX9 DLL, which is D3D9.DLL. It shouldn't be that hard to figure out. You also need to create a config file for DXVK. I'll put in the description the line you need to add there to ensure that the asynchronous shader compilation is working. It should be noted that ENB also uses that very same D3D9 DLL file, so you might have a hard time getting DXVK working with EMBs. I'm not exactly sure how you'd do that. I haven't used EMBs in a very long time, so I can't help you there. But looking at the performance numbers, it's clear that DXVK does improve my frame rates across the board. Most significantly in the fourth Repcon interior benchmark, where now I'm getting 78 FPS. That's pretty good, but unfortunately DXVK more than triples my GPU usage, at least on my shitty GTX 1060 mobile laptop. I have no idea why, but as a result of that, I can no longer play the game at 4K 60 FPS on a GTX 1060 mobile GPU. So DXVK sadly is not a silver bullet solution for me, at least. It increases my CPU limited frame rate, but it greatly reduces my GPU limited frame rate. That doesn't mean it will have the same effect on your system, though. You should definitely try it out for yourself and see what the result is on your end. The next two mods we'll install are BSA Decompressor and Ultimate Edition ESM Fixes. Both of them come as EXE installers. I guess because they can't just distribute the base game's assets. The ESM fixes are very easy to install with Mod Organizer 2, and you can always go back to the original ESMs if you want. But there's no such option with the BSA decompressor, so if you're worried about your files getting corrupted or something, you should definitely back up the vanilla BSAs before you use the BSA decompressor. After running both those programs and doing the benchmarks again, I was actually very, very impressed. My average frame rates were not really improved much, but my 1% and 0.1% lows were greatly improved. Whatever decompression algorithm was run on those BSAs has definitely improved performance. The only downside is now the BSAs are larger because they've been decompressed, obviously. Also, you need to make sure that you make the changes in your INI file that the decompressor tells you to make. If you're using Mod Organizer 2, it might not actually change the INI file in your profile. You'll have to make sure you do it manually. Otherwise, your game is going to be full of red error warning signs. And it's going to be completely fucked up if it even loads at all. So make sure you get that right. The next and penultimate plugin I want to showcase today is Mod Limit Fix. You might be thinking that this one is unnecessary because we only have one extra plugin loaded into the game, and many people have load orders with dozens of plugins, so how much of an improvement could this possibly make? Well, take a look at the benchmarks. The performance gains are huge. 
We've gained five extra FPS in the Repcon interior benchmark. The other benchmarks don't show as much improvement, but honestly, those are too variable anyways. I should have just done benchmarks where I stand still at various locations throughout the game. That would have been perfectly reproducible. That was going to be the last mod I was going to cover, but just a few days ago, an incredible new mod came out called Aqua Performa, which makes the New Vegas Strip area run about 20 to 30% better. Without sacrificing anything in terms of visual quality, all it does is remove some distant water LODs that you could never even see in the first place. And that's all. apparently all the strip needed to run significantly better. If only Obsidian had known that 12 years ago, then they never would have had to add the fucking loading gates onto the strip in the first place. It would have run perfectly fine on the Xbox 360 and PS3 if they had only known about this one simple trick. They could have kept their original vision for the strip, but nope, they fucked it up. Although, to be fair, modders didn't know about this fix either for 12 years, so it wasn't something obvious. Okay, I want to finish off this guide by talking about INI tweaks, specifically multi-threading tweaks. I'm going to test once and for all if they actually make any kind of performance difference. And the answer is yes, they actually do seem to make a slight difference. But it's still an appreciable difference, and there's no downside to enabling them, so make sure you always have these settings enabled. I've got them in my falloutcustom.ini, so all you have to do is copy that. I hope this guide helped you out. I hope it wasn't a complete waste of your time. But uh, yeah, for now, until next week, oodles.